Hi, I'm Jim Kearns. Welcome back to my series of examples in the topic of statics. Uh, for now, we're going to stick to friction with an example involving impending motion. Again, impending motion is something we use in our problem description where we will say, you know, what is the maximum force on an object before it moves? What's the maximum angle? These are kinds of ways to imply that we're looking for a equilibrium where the force from friction is equal to the maximum force available from friction, okay? And then that in turn implies that we can use the equation for the friction based on the static friction and the normal force in our equations of motion. Previous example we did without impending motion, and that example you just do the normal equations of equilibrium. After you're done determining the force of friction, you can compare it to the static friction force to determine whether it moves or not. But in this case, we're going to have the problem worded such that we can use this in our equations directly. So in this case, the question is, how high can he go? We've got a guy climbing a ladder. Um, the ladder is three meters long. Uh, it is sitting on a fairly slippery surface. The coefficient of friction is only 0.2. And as you go up the ladder, the necessary friction increases. And at some point, there's a potential that this ladder could slip. So we're going to determine how high you can go before it slips. So that's our impending motion keyword thought process. You know, how high can you go? What's the limit? What's the maximum? Where's, where's the edge? So that's what makes this an impending motion problem. As in the last example, the person has a mass of 81 and a half kilograms. We're neglecting the weight of the ladder for convenience and make the um, calculation simpler. Ladder angle is the recommended 75 degrees. Smooth wall, again, that's one of our keywords. That implies no friction. Same as the last example. Okay, And just like the last example, the first thing we're going to do is... Yes, that's right. We are going to draw the free body diagram. And there it is. It is very similar to the last free body diagram. In the last example, same reaction forces, same friction force, same dimensions. You know, from the three meter ladder, I use the sine and cosine of 75 degrees to get that dimension, that dimension. Okay. Um, again, the person weighs 81 and a half kilograms. Multiply that by, by 9.81. I get a force of 800 newtons. But what I don't know in this case, my unknown, is where that force is applied because as he goes up the ladder, you know, that force is going to be moved, applied higher and higher up the ladder. And at some point, you'll reach a point where the f available friction equals the maximum static friction. If he goes any higher, the whole thing is going to collapse. And we're trying to find where is that point, okay? So here's our free body diagram, the equations of equilibrium. I'm going to call this dimension between here and here, we'll call that D for the distance from our point A here. Now at this point, let's take a moment to count the number of unknown variables that we have. We have a normal force here against the wall. We have a normal force here at the floor holding the weight of the ladder. We have our friction, keeping the ladder from sliding. And we have the unknown distance at which the person has gone up the ladder. So that is for unknowns. And in previous examples, when we've done this two-dimensional kind of problem, we have three equations of equilibrium, three equations for unknowns, Normally that would be a problem, but because this is an impending motion problem, we know we're going to be right at the point where the friction is equal to the static friction, the maximum friction. This is our fourth equation, which lets us solve for the four unknowns. 
And from once I find that D, then I can calculate the distance up the ladder that way. So let's work through our equations of equilibrium. The sum of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. So my positive force here, the reaction force at the base, and A minus the force due to the person's weight, minus 800 newtons is equal to zero. And I can calculate that Na equals 800 newtons. Sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Friction at point A minus the normal force, the reaction force at the top of the ladder minus NB. That's equal to zero. I don't instantly have either of these numbers, but since this is an impending motion problem, I know that this is the point where things are going to slip. Okay. I can use this equation here to get a value for FA, okay? Because I'm looking for that geometry right exactly where it's about to slip. So I know that my friction force is going to be that maximum static force, which is equal to the coefficient of friction 0 0.2 times the normal force of 800 and that is equal to 180 newtons. So I can substitute this back into here, and I get my normal force at B equals to 180 newtons. My last equation is the sum of the moments about any point. Again, I chose point A to minimize the number of terms in this equation. And that is, I have the force and B at a distance of two point perpendicular distance of 2.9 meters. Counterclockwise, that's positive. So I've got N B times 2.90. I have my force here of 800 newtons at some unknown distance D. Okay. And that will be clockwise around point A. So that's minus 800 times D, our unknown distance. And we know NB, so we can now calculate what this distance D here has to be. So D equals 180, which is our normal force, times that 2.90 meters divided by 800 and that gives me a distance, horizontal distance over of 0 0.625 meters. So this is 0 0.625, and given that distance, I can calculate the distance up there. We'll call that L. L equals, well, we know that L cosine of 75 equals, that's supposed to be a 7, D, so, so L equals D divided by the cosine of 75, and I get a distance L equals 2.52 meters, and that is as far as our guy in the ugly green pants can climb up the ladder without it slipping. So he can get almost to the top, and if he takes one more step up to the very top, uh, the whole rig comes crashing down. And there's also the possibility at this point that the distance D could have been greater than that 0.776 meters that we have between the base of the ladder and the wall. In that case, we would know that the ladder was stable and wasn't going to slip no matter how high up the ladder he went. That's how we do a impending motion problem. We recognize that we're looking for that limit where we can use this equation in our equations of equilibrium. We, th we throw that number up into there. That lets us solve for some geometric unknown or some unknown force. And that's our problem. So I hope you found that useful. And I'll catch you on the flip side.